at 6.30 p.m. We'll ask that everybody mute their cell phones, call the order, and roll call. Oh, good Tonight, the first one is by James Moore and Company concerning your uh, annual fiscal audit. Good evening. My name is Chris Talek, uh, manager with James Moore. Uh, I helped perform the field work this year for your audit. I've been involved with it for the last four years. So tonight, we're going to cover your financial statements for the year ended September 30th, 2020. So first, I'm going to start on page two. You guys, your financial package is probably able to see here. Found copy. So page two, this has our uh, audit opinion on it. So this is pretty much what everything's for. Uh, similar to prior years, uh, you'll see at the top, there are some qualifications in the opinion. Uh, this means we do not issue an opinion on anything related to fire pension plans uh, or the OPEB, other pension liability. But this is similar to the prior years. It's been like this the last three years. Um, if you go to the middle of the page, you'll see unmodified opinion on general fund and aggregate remaining fund information. Uh, this is an unmodified for the remainder of the items, which means it's the highest level of insurance. So no issues on anything remaining other than the qualifications at the top. Uh, next, I want you to turn to page 11. So page 11, uh, these are, there are two sets of statements in here. One's called government-wide presentation, which starts on page 11, and one is fund presentation. The government-wide covers things that are long-term, so that includes capital assets, long-term debt, uh, and it includes all activities of all funds. <clears throat> what we're going to present on tonight, just to show a, is going to be a 12-month capture, so something a little more short-term, a little more reasonable uh, for the presentation. So if you'll turn to page 13, that's where those begin. So this is your balance sheet for the general fund. So this has 12 months of activity in it. Uh, no major changes in there. There were just a slight reduction you do from other governments. You collected more uh, grant receivables this year. Uh, the balance last year was 319. This year it's 132. So that's just grant timing. Uh, the one new item I wanted to show on here is deferred revenue. Uh, again, this is no problem. Yeah, no problem. No problem. No problem. And we're on page uh, 13 of that uh, bound copy right there. So about halfway down the page, uh, you'll see deferred revenues. Uh, that was a grant. Essentially, these are advanced funds received. 500,000 was received. Uh, about 250,000 was spent. There's 230,000 remaining to be spent in the general fund, uh, and this relates strictly to the river landing project. So that's a new item that was not in there in the prior year. And then if you go to the very bottom, you'll see your total fund balance is 176,000. Right, if you'll turn to page 15, we're going to do the general fund income statement. Uh, I want to start at the top. There's a revenue item called grants. You can see it's 926,000. So it's a lot of grant activity in the current year in general fund. 
Uh, last year was 249, this year is 926. So there's just a lot more activity, uh, primarily re related to river landing grants and your Dorea screen project. Uh, expenditures, your expenditures went up uh, similar to the grant. And so you got revenues and you expended those funds. Uh, and then you also had a few new purchases this year, a new fire truck uh, and a few other public safety vehicles. Uh, overall, your change in fund balance is a, a decrease of 319,000. And you'll see the ending fund balance again of 176. So that covers your general fund. Uh, next, I want to go through the proprietary fund, which is your utilities. Uh, so that starts on page 17. I think the biggest thing to point out here, last year you were waiting on a uh, substantial sum of money to come from FEMA. Uh, it was about $2.4 million. This money has been received this year. So the total uh, due from other governments decreased from $2.6 million down to $237,000. So those funds were received. Uh, also, uh, some of the investments were uh, cashed in and used towards a repayment on the note payable. Last year, you had a note payable of $7 million. Uh, $4 million of that was paid off this year. So those are the primary items. Uh, and then you can see at the very bottom, your total net position is $6.8 million. So it's a strong, strong net position. Uh, then if we go to the next page, this is your income statement. You'll see charges, uh, charges for service at 4.5 million. It's consistent with the prior year. Uh, reduction in expenses, total operating income of 857,000. Uh, there is a transfer out to the general fund. This has occurred uh, the last few years. Uh, once you've transferred out the funds of 1.7 million to the general fund, you have a decrease of 743,000 in the total fund. Missing at the bottom. So that's kind of a high level overview of the, the general fund and the proprietary fund. Uh, the notes to the financial statements start on page 22. And I'm gonna highlight some of the, the key areas. I pointed out before that some of the activity I presented on was 12 months. I'm gonna point and highlight some of the notes that will show the activity that hits the overall government-wide statements as well. All right, so the first one's gonna be actually on page 30. And that's actually note C in the middle. It says capital asset activity for the year. This is where you'd be able to track any additions or disposals of any uh, any items during the year. So the purchase of the fire truck, those vehicles I mentioned on the general fund, they'd all show up in here as increases. So this is a good good note to look at year to year. Uh, the next one is on page 35. And this this note on page 35 highlights any changes in your notes. So. Uh, for example, I mentioned the $4 million payment made on the uh, revenue note. Uh, you'll see that midway down reductions, $4 million. So this shows all your activity for the year on liabilities. All right. Next, uh, page 43. So page 43 has our new pronouncements. Uh, so these are things that will affect the statements in 2021. Uh, so the first one I want to point out is fiduciary activities. It's called GASB 84. Uh, it goes into effect next year. Uh, this might change how we have to present uh, the activity related to the Rosedale Fund or any activity that's held on your behalf or for another entity. Uh, so we're still kind of assessing how that will impact the presentation. Uh, and then GASB 87 is the standards. So eventually, uh, they keep delaying this pronouncement, uh, but eventually they'll make us show leases, even normal operating leases that has capital assets going forward. But I don't believe that'll take back till 2022, so we have plenty of time to kind of address this. Okay. Uh, the next thing I want to look at is your budget on page 45. So there are two columns here that highlight the budget outlined by the board and then also the final numbers. Uh, you'll see a final column, that's your final amended, bu amended budget, and then your actual, these are your actual expenses for the year for the general fund. Uh, due to the substantial amount of grant activity during the year, your actual expenses actually exceeded your final budget. Um, so each year we typically try to amend it just so we make sure that those match our line. You can't exceed your actual expenses on a budget. And I'm going to show you kind of how we have to comment on that in, on the next page. So if we'll turn to page 46. 
you'll see we had to add line eight, where essentially we had an overexpenditure of the budget, and it just related strictly to the grant activity. So a lot more grant activity in the year than was budgeted for. All right. Still turn to page 49. We had a couple new items this year, uh, segueing off the grant activity. Pages 49 and 50 are your CIFA schedules. So that's schedule of expenditures and uh, federal awards. Each year, if you expend over $750,000 in federal funds or $750,000 in state funds, you're required to add these to your financial statements. So page 49 shows the amount of federal funds. You'll see 2.4 million in the middle. That is your FEMA. So that is what caused this one to be a federal single audit this year. And then if you turn to page 50, these are all the state grants totaling eight, 888,000. And it, it'll outline which ones um, we reviewed and tested during the year. Okay. That being said, there are new, new reports we have to add to the back. So I'm gonna go through, there are a few, they're called yellow book reports, uniform guidance reports, and our AG report. So I'm gonna go through those one by one. The uh, first one is on page 52. As a government, you guys qualify as yellow book, which means we do a closer look at your internal controls. Uh, this report says there are no issues. So no issues were found in your internal controls. So that's a clean yellow book report. On page 54 is the uniform guidance report. That relates to your federal and state single audit. Again, internal controls over your grants and compliance with your grants, no issues found. So it's a clean uh, major program for federal and uh, state report. Okay. Next, we will turn to the schedule of findings and question costs on page 57. Again, due to the federal and state single audit, this is a new report we have to add this year requirement. Uh, there is one um, item uh, similar to last year. If you go to the bottom of 57, audit adjustments. Uh, we proposed a few significant uh, adjustments during the year and we're required to just point that out. Okay. Uh, but this is consistent with prior years. If you'll turn to page 60, this is the letter to the AG. Uh, we go through uh, different responsibilities and, and different items for compliance. The only two items of note are on page 61. At the bottom of page 61, we put in a comment on the budgetary controls. That is the one we discussed on the general fund budget based on grant expenditures, where the actuals exceeded actual, uh, the actual budget. Uh, and then there's one called uh, equipment tracking. Essentially, we just made a recommendation to keep a, uh, to track any equipment purchase grant funds during the year, just a closer eye on those. So these are just recommendations based on the AG report. All right, and then the last report, page 63, we complied with all investments. So your SBA funds comply with the standards. You, you guys can't uh, invest in Bitcoin, is what that's saying. So a little less risky on investments, you guys comply. Are there any questions? I know I kind of covered a lot of new reports this year. Um, but any questions on, on what I've covered so far? And if you come across any questions later, uh, Ron has got my contact information. You can always feel free to reach out to me. But do yeah. you see us being in pretty good standing compared to you know, years before? You know, cause like the things that y'all been wanting to see us be seeing. Yeah, there's been a, there's been a lot of improvements since the time I started here. I've had a lot of um, uh, I've worked with you guys very closely over the last years. You guys made a lot of strides forward. Uh, I'm really excited about our future. Uh, I got to work with uh, Rhonda this year, and we're we're moving in the right direction. In terms of the financials, uh, your proprietary fund is, is very strong at the, at the six million mark. So uh, you gotta like seeing that number. I know there are some cities and towns that don't have that type of uh, fund balance in the proprietary. So overall, everything's going in the right direction. Right, and then there's a one additional letter we have to go over. It's the board communication letter. It's a side packet. It's was it included inside of the, the bound copies or? It's a loose leaf, though. Mm -hmm. And it starts with the responsibilities in relation to the financial statement audit. This pretty much outlines that our responsibility uh, was to issue an opinion, and these are your financial statements. Uh, and then we get to communicate other items in here. 
uh, difficulties with uh, management. We had no difficulties with management. It was a pleasure working with everyone. Everyone was very responsive uh, to our requests and very helpful. Uh, no disagreements with management, uh, so we had no issues. So this is a clean, uh, a clean board of communication. No, no issues. Um, in this, at the very back, you'll also see a signed representation letter. This pretty much is uh, are the responsibilities of the city, uh, and that you guys have signed and taken representation for. But it's about four pages worth of information. Uh, but it's always a good read. Madam Mayor, may I ask a question? Yes, sir. Yeah. You know, going back to the comments you made, you talked about the lady on the grants. You know, we have several million dollars of grants out there, our applications. You, you never know how it's going to turn out. Would you prefer, and we're right in the middle of doing our budget our preparation, finalizing the budget. Would you rather see those in there? Are we, are we okay? Because I'm not one that likes to show it on the revenue side. I'm going to get $2.7 million. Right. Because then I need to try to account for um, uh -huh. expenditures and, you know, and it's 50 50 chance. Are we okay like we're doing it, being conservative, or would you rather I me mean, take a shot at some grant money? I'd say you take a shot. I would be conservative in the original budget, uh, the first of the year. Um, you guys have just instituted a new project tracking software, which will actually be very helpful. So, what it's going to do is it's going to track your actual expenditures throughout the year. So, by the time you're coming, to, to create a final budget, you can have a very accurate figure to address it. That way it's not going to exceed or go over actual because you're, you're going to get it on target. So it'll, it'll just be able to come into the year and match your expenditures. So I would I would take kind of a, a conservative approach at the beginning and then we'll see where you land by the end would, would be my recommendation. Thank you. I have one question. Yes, sir. I may not ask this Absolutely. So you guys can issue a budget amendment. Uh, I believe it's up to 60 days after a year in. Uh, I'll have to check on the exact uh, days, but I believe it's 60 days after a year in, you're actually able to amend your final budget. Uh, so you can kind of true it up at, at the end. But I think you'll do a pretty good job with the project management system in place. You'll be able to kind of amend it throughout the period and, and easily track it. I think. Uh, yes, sir. Can I respond? Absolutely. Once we realize we have a grant, for example, we have two grants tonight that you can either accept the grant or reject the grant, that I would enter those two grants into our project system. When we do it a budget amendment, we can do it quarterly, we can do it every six months, we can do it a year in. Personally, I'd like to see it done no later than at a six months in we'll see where we are once our money falls in place. When we realize we have a grant, we're getting a grant, we can adjust the budget to recognize, to show that we're going to get this grant money in and have these expenditures. So you'll see it in and out of basically be a zero amount, it, it, a zero effect on our total budget, but you'll actually see a line item for that particular grant itself. Two line items, one to recognize the revenue and one to recognize the expenditures. And then each quarter as we expend the money, which generally most of our grants are reimbursement money, you will see a deficit, if you will, in the general fund, or the city fund, depending on what grants and what's in the general fund. On the expenditure that we put out, we will also offset that with a decent thing. So at year end, it's through the adjustments that they've been having to come in in the year and say, oh, you've got this money that came in the new year, the new fiscal year from the state of Florida, but you didn't recognize this revenue and any of this revenue the entire year, they won't have to make those adjustments because I already know how to do those, most of them. I may have to have some assistance, but I know at the end what items need to be um, accrued at your end and what items need to be deferred, whether we got $500,000 for a project on September 30th, but we're not going to start the project until October 1st. Any of that money that we had is a deferred revenue. It's already been added to our accounting system. Right. It's already, it's already done. So. But if yes, there was something that we need that we need to take an action on, please. No, sir. If you could, if you it's could do it, I just generally said you. principal, except for the county principals, which I will be doing in preparation. I think thank you, Ms. Johnson. Ma'am. Say thank you, Ms. Johnson. Thank you, ma'am. I just ordered this. Appreciate it. Well, like I said.
answer and reach out if you have any questions that come up in the future. I really appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And, yeah, I'd like to say thank you because I was brand new when they started here, and he and his associate that came and audited were very patient with me and very congenial and really worked with me to get the interesting information that they did. And I appreciate the fact of being patient and, and um, helping me learn things for the research. I appreciate it very much. Uh, yeah, we appreciate it as well. You got a bright future. Um, the, the grant stuff, I've never seen someone get so excited about project accounting software, so you've got the right person. <laughs> 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 yeah, thank you. Thank you. It would be appropriate to ask for uh, a motion to accept the uh, audit report at the ministerial motion. Can I get a motion to accept the audit report? I move that we accept the audit report due to Jersey this time from day one coming regarding the 2020. I second it. Okay, we proper the motion is second. Positive vote. Okay. Mayor Richardson? Yes. Ms. Bass? Yes. Mr. Walter? Yes. Mr. Leon? Yes. And Mr. Cameron? Yes. Madam Mayor, we also have another presentation by Shadi Chimanshi. Good evening. Good evening, Good evening. Madam Mayor Chimanshi. Thank you, Mayor and Council and City Staff Attorney. We uh, appreciate being able to be up here and uh, give out this award. We also have a, this is kind of a two part thing. So we have a uh, year end report uh, that Ms. Alicia Coon and Mr. Isaac Cannon will be up here in just a moment right after me. Uh, on the July the 24th, 21st through 24th, Tiffany, Tiffany and myself went to the Florida Main Street Conference which was down in Newport Ritchie. And we were presented, Patricia Main Street was presented with an award from the Florida Trust for Historic Preservation. And we want to give you, this is your copy that we got for you all for you to put somewhere in either the city hall or wherever you would like to put it. And I just want to read, um, read this real quickly. This was a, our pamphlet from the, from the award pamphlet. This award, well, the award is for Meritorious Achievement and Organizational Achievement. This award honors the dedicated and creative work of the Shadow Human Street Program and spearheading a number of successful projects to revitalize the community. Shadow Human Street developed a strategic community vision plan through a Florida Department of Economic Opportunity Community Planning Technical Assistance Grant. Subsequent projects included the placement of historical markers, the grant funded River Landing Heritage Trail, a completion of two grant funded historic surveys that led to Chattahoochee being placed on the National Register of Historic Places in 2020. Chattahoochee Main Street received several Florida Division of Historical Resources grants to assist with these projects. Other highlighted projects included a collaboration with Jackson County on a facade grant program for properties in the historic downtown. Chattahoochee Main Street also spearheaded the Highway 90 Eastern and Western Gateway Beautification Project through a Florida Department of Transportation grant, as well as the Galvanizing Gadsden Consortium and Symposium. The design excellence of the, of the display panels for the River Landing Heritage Trail is included in the Organizational Achievement Award for Chattahoochee Main Street. And so we are, we are very proud of this award. May I uh, pass this around? Or maybe you can get a picture with someone to oh, it to you. I'd like to share with you there.
uh, now with uh, Alicia and our treasurer Alicia Kenny and board member Isaac Simmons will come up and Good evening, everyone. I don't think I'm a stranger to anybody, and I think you might know this tall gentleman sitting next to me. This is Isaac Simmons, and I'm Alicia Coon. Um, we're here on behalf of the Chattahoochee Main Street tonight. Um, this is something that um, we may or may not have ever done in the past. I'm, I'm not really sure, uh, but I felt like, or all of the board members felt like it was something that um, we needed to start doing for ourselves as well as we needed to do it for others. Um, and um, it's something that the Florida Main Street organization has encouraged us to do. And so, um, anyway, you all were uh, presented probably earlier at some point um, by uh, one of the board, one of the Chattahoochee Main Street board members. Um, what I'm giving you right now, um, but I'm just giving this to you so that you have it in case you didn't bring it with you again tonight. Um, anyway, that back page there is going to be the annual report that. Um, I'll just briefly and quickly kind of cover real fast. Um, <clears throat> Main Street has been involved uh, in, in the 2020 uh, fiscal year for us in many different activities, and this is kind of a summary of that. Uh, I'm sure many of you are aware of the, um, the sanitizers that we put in all the restaurants in town. Um, and just in case you guys didn't already know, Tiffany is our wonderful AmeriCorps VISTA um, person that we were able to secure a grant for funding for her salary for one year um, and she has been in a tremendous uh, just I can't even describe how helpful she has been uh, but that was through uh, that was made possible um, through uh, an application that we made through AmeriCorps um, and uh, Tiffany will uh, we've already approved for her to to extend and extend her time here for another nine months nine months um, so anyway, the archaeological survey was also something that we were uh, monumental in um, incorporating through uh, that is basically conducting the actual surveys. I've known those mounds have been down there all my life, and y'all have too, but there was never an actual survey of where they exactly were and the dimensions of them, how big they were, and where they, you know, where the grades started up and so forth. And um, then in, we also, um, uh, through some funding uh, from the Department of Historical Resources, did some interpretive signage down at the River Lane. If you haven't been there to see that, you certainly uh, should take a stroll and, and, and check those out. Um, we did also another grant um, through historic, the Historic Registry, uh, or Department of Historical Resources again, but um, this was picking up all of the historical buildings in the downtown district and within a block that a block north and block south of the downtown um and and now we are officially if you didn't already know but our downtown is on the national national registry for historic places now so um that is huge and going forward for any sort of grants or things like that that we might want to get done or things that we might want to get accomplished um in downtown um that was pretty monumental for those things to happen um we one of the things that that i was very passionate about because i'm a landscape architect and so this was like uh, a wonderful opportunity for me to get the team and that's the r2p2 we call it r2p2 recovery and resilience partnership um i don't know if all of you knew this but uh, these landscape architects planners engineers a dot personnel from all over the country came to our little town um thanks to chattahoochee main street and uh and a grant if you will um, no money was exchanged, but um, of course we we just asked them nicely, and because of Hurricane Michael, that was part of what um, they were were um, were doing for various different towns. And um, we had the wonderful opportunity to create a vision for our town and to to get some goals aligned for what where we want to see ourselves go. We took in those surveys, and those folks, you know, helped us to basically take all of that information and put it in a form that we could all convey to others, help us to get grants and say, hey, this is what we want to do, this is where we're going. Um, so um, that was another part of last year. Of course, Christmas at Heritage Park, um, the Light Up the Town project, we were part of that, of course. Um, we we're always a part of the Second Harvest. Um, we did the community surveys online and helped to know what the people of the town um, of the city want to see going forward. What do you, what do you want to see our town become? What, what do we, you know, what are your, what's your heart? What's your desire? 
so we did that um and um now you're seeing their uh, shot, small little snapshots of the business owners and what they do in, um, in, in town and um, giving some personal insight into those. And then of course, last but not least, and one of my favorites is the Martin's Harvest Fresh Produce and Greens that we are having um, delivered to Chattahoochee every week on Thursdays. Um, in case you didn't know or you hadn't heard, um, those are not like collard greens and turnip greens and those sorts of things, but it's um, butterhead lettuce, spring mix lettuce, lovely, delicious, I promise it's the best lettuce you've ever eaten in your life. And so uh, delivered fresh from the farm, picked on Monday, ordered by Wednesday at noon and arrived into our little town by, by 10 on Thursday. Um, so anyway, so that's just kind of a snapshot of what Main Street has done in 2020. Um, and in saying that, we also, uh, presented to you guys um, a letter um, that um, I, I guess for just lack of a better word, I'll just read it so that everyone here. Um, Chattahoochee Main Street greatly appreciates the partnership that we share with the city of Chattahoochee in promoting the revitalization and preservation of our community. This has been a very successful year in laying the foundation for revitalization of the downtown business district with 10 new business opening within the last six months. In spite of the current pandemic, we think it's safe to say that we're on the brink of revitalization. In the years past, the city has supported the Chattahoochee Main Street organization monetarily and or through the provision of office space and utilities. With that said, we'd like to take this opportunity to request the city to begin supporting the organization again. We have taken the liberty of providing you with the breakdown of our annual expenses as seen below. Please take a moment and review the outline expenses as well as the annual report provided and consider how the city might commit to partnering with Chattahoochee Main Street to continue the road to recovery, resilience, and economic development. Um, I know that um, in years past, we've probably all heard uh, some of the rumors, I might call them, um, and, and I was a part of the organization post-rumorish, post I guess you might say, about uh, how things were ran in our organization, but I do want to tell you that this is a non-for-profit organization. Um, the, our board members are all volunteers. Every single person that's part of this organization is a volunteer. I stand before you as a business owner, a mom, a homeschool mom, all the above, and I give as much of my time as I possibly can at no cost to this organization. And when we put fundraisers together, we're if we're fundraising lately, we're fundraising to pay the bills for the most part and to whatever is extra and less beyond that we're putting back into the community we're reaching out we're we're putting together whatever we possibly can to contribute and give back to this community and we have for so long um our organization has withstood so much um over the years and between hurricane michael that took away our office like three times between roof leak and <laughs> it was and, um, but i'm so happy that we are in the home that we are in finally the old pickens pharmacy building long before my time but the Pickens Pharmacy Building uh, apparently holds a pretty, um, pretty monumental uh, history in this town, and I'm thankful that we're there. Uh, John Hubbs and his wife, his wife is a native to this, to this community, and they are so gracious to, to work with us, and um, so we're thankful for them as well. And they, they are ex just ecstatic that Main Street wanted to move into that building. Um, and so, uh, anyways, we, um, we broke down for you um, a few of our annual expenses that, or this is our annual expenses, and this is operated on a, a bare bones, I mean, <laughs> this is it. Um, but um, as you'll see, the, the, our rent and utilities and insurances, that's like just, I mean, to even just have a building, period. Um, we go to the Main Street Conference every year, you heard Pam talk about her. That's a requirement to be considered a Main Street organization. You have to attend those annual conferences. Um, and um, so, so that's a requirement there, and that's a pretty essential um, and bare bones sort of number to, to get two representatives there. Um, office supplies and things like that, those are, you know, essential. Um, the Ma Main Street um, membership and dues, that's a requirement. Um, and we have to pay an accountant every year. And I'd like to see that number be a little cheaper, but let's just let's face it, accountants aren't cheap. <laughs> so, um, anyways, um, so I, I just, um, I guess I come before you as one of the younger generations of the organization, just to say, 
I just like to hope that the city might would consider giving us a blessing to say, let's get back with our arm in arm partnership. We know that you guys have uh, physically been there. We know that you've verbally been there. We know that your presence is at almost all of the ribbon cutting. Somebody is there um, and you guys do a lot of other things. You help us with bucket truck. You help us with signs. You help us with those sorts of things. Um, we certainly thank you for that. Um, I guess it's just a plea to get us back to, to at least maybe somewhere where we were before. Um, and I don't know if Mr. Isaac maybe had another thing or two he might want to say. Um, you think you covered everything? No. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I'm, well, first of all, I'd like to uh, thank the council for giving us the opportunity to, uh, to basically speak to you in reference to this. But when I look at this annual report, I think uh, the students did a very good job of that. The key to it is that we're requesting support. That's the main thing, financial assistance. I think we all know in the past that the city of Cadillac made a large financial contribution on a yearly basis to Main Street. And, and basically that funding basically went away. The funding went away. But the obligations or expenses for our organization still they're still there. So currently, the only funds that we have to deal with our expenses are two basically basic fundraising things. Uh, I think I spoke to Mr. Moultrie and I, uh, Commissioner Moultrie and I spoke to Commissioner Williams and Williams about this. Is that the myth is that the final Friday is an event where we raise a lot of money through bill sales. That's absolutely not true. On most of the final Fridays that we've had, we barely break even. We make no money, uh, no revenue off of final Friday. So final Friday has come to be an event to basically bring people downtown for entertainment and to create, you know, little economic stimulation downtown. I think in September we got it where all the businesses are gonna be open during the time when we have final Friday. But we don't have any main revenue that's coming in other than selling pork, barbecue pork sandwiches and different, different events. So it's a hustle every month for us to make our expenses. The biggest asset that we have is a partnership with the city of Chattanooga. That's you. And what we're asking you to do is make a commitment financially to this organization so that we can meet our budget, pay our expenses, and continue to do the great work that we're doing in this community. Now, let's be real. Main Street is an organization that's really on the move. We're on the move because we have the support of the city. City manager has always been there working with us. But monetarily, we got to have some assistance. we got to have some help. And the key to it is that when we talk to some of the commissioners, you all say, well, if we give you a dollar, everybody else is going to be asking for a dollar. Well, I want to share this with you. There's not another organization in this area can put on the table the things we've done, the amount of work, the investment we've made in this community for the economic violation and growth of city of Not no, no organization. We have basically contributed over six hundred and fifty thousand dollars in grants. Grant money that's come in that's been put into the city. And the second thing is remember, every dollar we get or generate is put right back in the community. <laughs> There's nobody getting paid. There's no salary like they had in the past with the executive director. We don't have that anymore. Nobody's getting any money other than the visit of volunteers that we get through the grant fund. But so nobody's getting benefited from this. So when I ask you for support, it is like as a, a councilman, I'm basically asking for myself as a citizen because of the type, the money I pay and contribute. I want to see this money go away. It's going to be some growth. Main Street is really moving, doing some great things, and we can do some greater things, but we've got to have the support. And I want to say this lastly. In the past, you all gave one year, I think, $60,000, a couple more years, forty, fifty thousand dollars $50,000, whatever. But when you made us commitment, there was not one organization came to you and said, you gave Main Street 60000 you gave them 50 you gave them 40 Give us something. Nobody's ever done that. And that's not going to happen again. Because nobody can show you what they're doing in the community like Main Street. We are generating economic conversation and stimulation in the community. Last Friday, you couldn't even park 
died down. There was nowhere to fall. Because of the things that happened. Now, it all didn't happen because of Main Street, but what I'm telling you is that everything that's happened, Main Street is a part of it. We are a part of it. And that is just the beginning. And that's what it takes. We got to invest in it, but you got to invest in it also to make this grow. So it's just like trying to see when you put this fund into Main Street, you basically put it back in this community. And that's basically all we ask is that we turn these dollars around and generate some revenue for everybody in the city. So we thank you for the opportunity of just sharing this with you. And we talk to you, each, each one of you individually, but we're, we're ready to move the city. And, and don't put the brakes on it. Let's, let's, let's go. You've got to make an investment in it. I just want to touch on this. Hurricane Michael came in, devastated city of Chattanooga. And I remember Commissioner uh, Blair saying, we broke, we bankrupted. We broke, we bankrupted. But the key to it is, is that, based on the annual report and everything, they said $7 million all that, you just about paid all that back. You just about, people are willing to pay for the services they receive. And we're willing to pay to make this town grow. This town will not grow unless each of you, along with everybody else, step forward and put forth an effort. You got to plant the seed. That's all we're asking that you do. Just, just think about planting the seed. And then if somebody come and ask you for a dollar, what can they do for you? We can give you paper after paper after paper of what we've done for the city of Chattanooga as a nonprofit organization. We love this city. We're part of this city. We appreciate your support and everything. So we're asking that please consider in your budget some form of revenue for Main Street. Any questions? If not, I say thank you so much. I have a question. Yes, I, I know we got this uh, amount here. Uh, uh, is this is what y'all asking the city for? Well, you know, that question. Just to get out That question came up. I asked the question in the meeting. We had a meeting prior to this. If they asked us what amount of money do we want, what should we say? And it was basically, we leave it up to the city to make that decision. But if you look at our expenses here, you know, it's fourteen thousand two hundred something dollars. I don't have it left on for a year, but we really need the help, and we don't have any revenue coming in. Any revenue? I got another question. Okay, so how does other Main Street within the city of Chattanooga get revenue? Is it through funding from the city government mm -hmm. and fundraising events like we do? And like, how much do they usually contribute from the different cities? Do y'all? I think that depends on the size. I don't know. Depends on the size. Mr. Simmons, what I would ask is that each levy or one of your representatives get with the city manager and talk about it because it is budget time. Mm -hmm. So talk about it and then he bring it back to us as a consent item for us to vote on. Okay. That's good enough. Fair enough. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. And thank y'all for thank what you. all you did doing this thing. Thank you. 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 Thank Six more. Right. Really <laughs> <laughs> we'll, we'll save you a seat. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know when I'll be there. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. 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 I make a motion to approve the consent item of July, I mean, August 3rd, 2021. Second. 
has a positive motion and second. Mayor Richardson? Yes. Mr. Kinley? Yes. Ms. Williams? Yes. Mr. Malti? Yes. And Ms. Bobby? Yes. Thank you. Um, we're skipping number seven. Uh, there was no items to vote that were called in. So we have two citizens requesting to be heard on non agenda items. One is Mr. Simmons and one is Ms. Stanley Floyd. Floyd, I'm sorry. Um, the new principal of Stanley Elementary. Mr. Floyd, um, Mr. Simmons, would you acquiesce to Ms. Floyd? I'd like to yield to the principal. Good evening. Good evening. Thank you all for allowing me to come before you again. I want to give you a quick update on the progress we've made at Chattanooga Chia Elementary School so far. And I want to talk to you about what we discussed at the last meeting as well. Specifically, the average number of meetings for the time of the last year. Thank you. Do you have one for us? Yeah, you can see what it is. Is it the front door? No, no, no. So first, the really exciting new school grade for release today, and Chattahoochee Elementary School received a grade of B. Yeah. 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 Principal, we have the same staff, though, so we're expecting great things for this year as well. Mm -hmm. And thank you all for all of your support. The the city of Chattahoochee has been great. Thank you so much for coming to the the city the um sorry the community open house. And thank you all for the provision of support with that area between Highway 90 and the school. Mr. Gilcrease and his crew came out there with bad codes and things that I don't know what the name of them are, and they, they cleared it out. It looks great. So please feel free to ride by. I'd love to also give you a tour of the school because we painted all the common areas, and it really, really looks nice. We're also going to have another open house. It'll be our first family night, and that is going to be August 12th at 530. I'll post that on our school's Facebook page as well. So now to the digital sign so that we can uh, broadcast and showcase all of those accomplishments appropriately. Um, I did get quotes from three companies and Apogee Signs gave us the best um, thing for our book, so to speak. They're located in Midway, Florida, so they're right here in Jackson County. They're easily accessible and they're a homegrown business. Um, the point of contact is Matt Schroed and he gave me a couple of options for the digital school sign. And I gave you some pictures at the bottom of the document just in case you needed a visual. Um, so the the brand that we want to go with is called the Dactronic School Sign. Those are the electronic signs that you'll see at sporting events, um, at other schools and at churches around the area. St. Peter Missionary Baptist Church is actually right across the bridge in the city, so you can kind of go over there and see what their work looks like. Then we have the option to have a pole mount or a um, masonry base. Of course, the masonry base does increase the cost a little bit, and it's only for aesthetics, so um, that is totally at the discretion of the council. And then the next step for us are to tour the Apogee facility. I was over there today, and it is amazing. He even offered us the opportunity to bring students there on field trips, but I'd like to invite the council to go over and take a look at what Apogee does from day to day. And then we have to select the preferred signage option and consult with the district maintenance department as well as the city so that we can secure the appropriate permit and the circuitry for the for the digital presentation. Um, the estimated commitment is um, a ballpark figure based on what other um, organizations have uh, have paid, but it depends, of course, on our preferences for the signage. Do you have any questions? I think so. I think that they will definitely partner because it will be on school board property and it's for the benefit of the school. I've spoken with um, the maintenance department and their representative, Mr. William Hunter, um, and I think that he will be willing to support the initiative as well. Well, of course, I'm going to say that it's going to be high, but I haven't talked numbers with him yet, Mr. Kimley, so I don't want to overcommit them. And then, what time frame are they looking at putting the sign 
again if it comes to fruition? So if it comes to fruition, it'll take about eight weeks for us to get it um, installed. Mm -hmm. when, when it comes to fruition, it'll take about eight weeks for us to get it installed. <laughs> I haven't asked them for this specifically, but I've met with the Rotary Club. I have an appointment with the American Legion. I'm meeting with the MLK organization, and I'm also meeting with the Women's Center. So I haven't asked them for this specifically, though. It's been more about volunteers. And different what you're saying is you're not asking for a certain amount. And I understand the full issue of asking for help, but I would think that you would talk with the school board and see what they are going to put forth and come back to us with an amount so we can then know what you are in need of. That makes sense. So if you would do that for us, and then we'll know. Well, it is budget time. We'll know where we can go with it and help out. Absolutely, absolutely, I can do it. Thank you all so much. And I got so excited about the school rates, but I forgot my last bit of good news. So we were projected at the school board budget time to have 90 students enrolled this year. And I want to announce that we have 131 students right now. And our goal is 150. <laughs> Concern about ambulance services here in Chattanooga. Now, I may be wrong, but I think currently the status is if, if I call 911 and I need some emergency service, the ambulance has to come from Quincy. Am I right or wrong? Quincy. No, there's one development. We have one a truck, time. one truck stations here, unless it's out of the area on the transport. Okay. We do have one. Where's the station at? 
the hospital grounds of the house they use, they let us use, the county use. You would stay Yeah. Okay. 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 Well, I wasn't aware of that because I didn't see it or whatever. So when I told the uh, commission mostly we were discussing it. But one thing, I just, that kind of changed the game a little bit. But the key to it is that I, I want to make sure that we have a system in place that can respond to emergencies in our community as quickly as possible. When someone calls 911, I want to know that there's somebody that's going to be staffed and ready to go and respond to that call. Now, the key is that if the ambulance is not at the hospital, then there's your problem. There's your problem. It's got to come from Quincy. Get you. And then, and then they got to go back to Quincy to take you to get some services or whatever. I, I'm asking the council if they would look at how we can improve our emergency response services here. Because, ladies and gentlemen, we need it. You know, and it's it's scary to think if you have a medical emergency at your home. The question is where where is the services coming from? Are they coming from the state hospital? If somebody gets sick at the state hospital, I'm sure they use that same animal. Mm -hmm. You know, but we need something that's dedicated to the citizens of Kedoochi. We need something here. Now the teachers you say, well, it's gonna cost. Everything costs. And that's why we pay the taxes and utilities and all that. So when things come up, then we can address those issues. But to have a good quality of life here in Kennedy, we got to pay for these services. And the citizens are proven through Hurricane Michael and all the other things that we're willing to pay for the services. Because our utilities and things were, we consider essential. And everybody paid that fee until, you know, this is basically deal with cost. But if we have to pay extra funding or whatever to increase or improve, enhance the current MLM service, emergency services, I think that's something we need to look at. I mean, this, this is a serious subject. You know, you know, I think they had some people fall out uh, in the event here in the last week. You know, and if one truck come and they're gone, something happens, you know, we just need to have some continuous plan in place. And then where it starts, it just start on having a conversation. But we, we really need to enhance that to improve it. Because I didn't know we had a truck at the uh, hospital. I didn't know that. Yeah. I, I just talked to Mr. Lee Smith about this the day of the open, the cutting up there. Because I've had two people call me about one was racking up, the girl got burned, mm -hmm. said they wouldn't be here for 45 minutes. Well, that's not acceptable. That's not acceptable. That girl's leg was burned. Her employees say it put her in her car and carried her to Tallahassee. That's not acceptable to me either. But if I'm not mistaken, they're owned by the county, right? Yes. Yes, they are. Owned by the county. Let me make a comment on that particular instance because I looked into that because there was a lot of talk about that. And I, uh, although there are some issues with the response times of the ambulances, that particular instance was uh, dispatched. But the sheriff's office in Quincy was some of the delay on that particular one. Yeah, well, that's what I'm saying. That can't happen because that's a that's a that can be life or death. Yeah. I mean, I know another woman that her blood pressure was affected highly. They were seen in Tallahassee, and said it'd be 45 minutes. Okay, well, if she's having a stroke, that's 45 minutes that can be detrimental to her health. She did. Yeah. And so I talked to Mr. Neesmith about it, and so and he didn't understand that the county was over everything. And I told him, yes, when I was growing up here, our policemen had the ambulance here and they was EMT certified and paramedics, we had all that. And they would go on the calls. But now it's all county owned. And I think there's two ambulances at a time on board for the whole county? No, it's about four now. Is there four? four okay, but you think if ours was dragged all the way to Havana, we got somebody that could be I'm with you on this. I've had a discussion with the county and to add a truck and have to put a bill on it. So about 350000 a year annually. Uh, they're faced with the same problem. I mean, we can come up and say we, we want to fund one that's here. I'm sure they'd be more than happy to do it, but that is the cost annually. <laughs> and also, Chief Maddox, uh, by the way, just resigned. So the county is going to be, uh, the army ought to be out now, but he just turned his inside of So the county's going to be looking for a new EMS director. And, and that's the thing. 
the truck is not ours. But we'll we'll write here the on, on that. Because just because the truck is here don't mean that just for that room. So it might be implanted eighty five percent of the time. You know, so just if you have something it's dedicated just for that area. It's just possible. Well, so all of advocating is ownership. Right. Let's let's right. own what we right. need to have right. to have the services we need here in Chattanooga. If we got to pay four or five dollars extra on our utility bill to pay for the truck and the people, let's do it. But we need to do something. I'm, I'm just getting pissed off about it. We need to get some internet services here in Chattanooga. And if we got to pay for it, we got to pay for it. Because we are elderly community. Yeah. Mm -hmm. We are elderly community. I don't want to wait 45 minutes. You know, and I don't want nothing out of us to have to wait 45 But we can, we, we can do something about it. And, so, and, and we are, you know as well as I do, they just told me tonight, financial the city is in great shape. Let's take that money, invest it back into the community, and know that one, one thing we got into, we got an MLS service. Let's own it. The hell with the county. You already know when it comes to this end of the time, we don't get what we need. Exactly. So let's, let's look at I have a conversation about what we can do to make our emergency service better. Just have a conversation and see what you can do. We have to spend some money, but let's spend the money. I wanted to pay extra money to the bill to know that somebody can get to my house in five minutes rather than five five minutes. You know. So that's my concern. I apologize. I'm just frustrated about it. I, I don't <laughs> like that one, Mr. Smith, the other day. Okay. I wouldn't want nobody to have Call him on the top and just talk to him. You know, I know Mr. Smith, he makes make things move. I think he can get the job done, but we 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 don't have to have the county. We are city. We are a city municipal government. We have everything they got. Probably mm -hmm. better find out the shape that they are. So let's work together and make this happen. Let's just make this happen. Let's let me the priority of yours. Make this happen. Right. I don't know. I honestly don't know. We will have the emergency services that we because I'm like you. I had this concern two years ago. And they were telling me that they were going to put the ambulance here in Calhoun at the Florida State Hospital. But the clients there at the Florida State Hospital would be given first consideration. And most of the time, when we are in need of the ambulance, they've taken some of the clients over to Tallahassee. Right. And then there's a waste of time once right. they get there in Tallahassee. So my suggestion would be is that we would give our city manager the opportunity to look into what you're talking about, mm -hmm. bring it back to us, so that we can try and figure out what route we really need to take. That's good. It's very important. Yeah. Thank, Thank you so much. I appreciate it very much. Thank you. Mm -hmm. yeah. Mr. One time that when they were talking about the shortage of the ambulance, they get something to do with the, the getting the people on the ambulance to work on. I know one time they were. They There's a struggle with, with recruiting paramedics. Uh -huh. yes. I don't know if they're still having that problem, but I did meet with them and talk about the cost of the truck. Uh -huh. That wasn't a couple of years ago, like you say, when I first uh -huh. come here and it was saying, you know, we even had him to cover. Yeah, we have some. But, um, you know, let's, I was like, yeah, well, Let's just get a truck. And well, when you find out what's required, the the uh, salaries and for the paramedics and the EMTs, and then they have to work under a medical director, and, and then you're covering 24 hours shifts, so it takes a lot of people. Um, but it came up to you know about 350,000 a year, and and the chief was all for that. You know, he even had to get the commissioners to approve it. Yeah, absolutely. Y'all gonna find a truck? It'd be part of Well, we have one part of each other. But when they get a call at dispatch in Quincy, let's just say the truck in Havana is busy on transport. You think for a minute they're not going to dispatch the Chattanooga truck and be liable for not responding? You know, they're going to use that truck as one of their own. Exactly. Was the story I got. Exactly. Um, they just, uh, there's a lot of calls in Gadsden County. That's nothing new, and it's a lot worse now with COVID and all. I think what would help the truck that's assigned to this area more than anything is the Florida State Hospital started transporting again. You know, they have an ambulance. Mm -hmm. And they quit transporting during COVID, at the beginning of COVID. And I think that's having a lot to do with our truck because every time they get toned out, you know, 
it's a minimum of two hours. Mm -hmm. well, well, can we look at it like the like um, council lady said, maybe looking at both options as far as with the county and if we try to do You know what I'm saying? Just look at it so we can have a discussion. And if and putting guidelines on because if we put that kind of money out, we gonna have most definitely have to have some type of guidelines. Exactly. That is not gonna be able to be able to first fall. They you know couldn't respond saying? across a certain yeah. line or something like that. I don't what legality will there be yeah, with mean. that? Because if it's an emergency and we say they can't respond, then we open up for lawsuits. Well, that's why I say we need to open it up and have them discuss this. And then we have they got a brand new chief coming. Mm -hmm. um, I don't know who this is going to be or how long it's going to take, but just as we did a couple of years ago when that chief came on board. I'll have them come here and talk to the citizens, talk to this council, and let them know the problem because you would think you'd be hopeful that they're looking for improvements to be made in that system. But the county's going to have to just beef it up. They don't have enough trucks for the amount of call volume. Gadsden yes, County has the highest call volume bar Leon County mm -hmm. anywhere. And I say it's because of the health disparities myself. You have diabetes, you have people chest pain, you know. That's just my guess. I'm not a doctor. But if you look at it as per population, we, we have double or triple the call run of any other county. Well, I know yeah. like in Alabama, they have the private ambulance services. Mm -hmm. um, can we check in and see if that? I mean, is, is that working in Florida? The county can, we. The county don't care about us on this end. I'm sorry. I don't know, but they don't uh, ever, I mean, we know what's going on right now with some of our I look at all the money. options, and I've got kind of a meeting coming up with the hospital administrator, and I think it would do a lot of improvement back to their own residents. And that's what I was going to say. When you have that meeting with them, can we find out why they can't transport their own people? And it started with the COVID, so I'm sure it was related to that somehow. I they closed their medical unit. That was three administrators ago, you know? Yeah. So he may not know, but I think that's the equivalent of, of buying an ambulance. That's the equivalent of that three hundred fifty thousand dollars a year. Is if they utilize an ambulance that's bought and paid for, they have the personnel at the fire department. But if they transport, I mean, look, they got. I mean, you have a lot of calls. That's a thousand people. Plus employees. I mean, it's got to make a difference. It should almost be the equivalent of us buying a truck and staffing it. If, if they, if, if we could figure out a way to use it right, we almost could partnership up with the Florida State Hospital sometimes. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm that saying? Might be an option. You know, and, but we have to be at the table saying that, hey, we got to make sure that, you know, the citizens, is, you know what I'm saying? So they're, they're citizens, too. They're on our, they're on our, yeah. right, they're on our numbers, so they're citizens, yeah. too. So yeah. We, 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 we cannot deny them, sir. Well, yeah. I'm saying, still, we're looking at it to have a truck here with the Florida State Hospital and not going out for out the county. You know, I think a lot of the, the problem is not Florida State Hospital. I think mm -hmm. it's going out doing with the county. Just like the hospital. Our hospital truck would not have no miles on it if we weren't going out there to the our team. Right. We bought the cheaper truck for thirty years. Right. So it's not the Florida State Hospital. It's going back and forth to Point and Hay Brown. And traveling all through Greensburg, and that's that's what it is. You make a good point. And Florida State Hospital owning a truck is not required to respond to the ban. Right. So we can call them that, that might be something there. And they already have family. And it's like you said, it's one call lasts two hours. Yeah. I mean, yeah. If they if the emergency room ain't busy and they can take them in. And... But question: Don't ambulance charge? People for the use of that vehicle. Mm -hmm. yeah. About twenty five percent so pay. About twenty five percent you collect. Okay. So there, there is some. You know, you're gonna reap some cost. So every time it goes out, there has to be some revenue. I know I've been out one time with nine hundred fifty dollars on the on the bill. Yeah. And you want that paid? That that's kind of a problem with it too. Miss Benny, some of us don't say that. I know. I know. I'm gonna add something too. Uh, it may be a small percentage of it, yeah. but um, uh, training for dispatchers has a big role. And sometimes when these ambulances get dispatched out, uh, you know, not pointing your fingers at any particular agency, but there's times when the dispatcher they'll send an ambulance that 
that's from maybe Chattahoochee that's not the closest, you know, but they'll call Chattahoochee and just for the lack of training or just whatever it may be. And I think that was a part of what happened at, at Rack em Up. And it happens a lot, you know, and like I said, I see it on my end, you know, a lot of citizens don't know that, but it happens a lot and it's and it's been happening more frequently recently. So we need we need to look at the, the training aspect too, you know, as a totality of the of the whole situation. The, Cause it's, I mean, all it takes is one time, you know, and look what happened at Rack'em Up, or look what happened, you know, when, you know, when the person passed out, whatever. So, you know, that, that little, you know, percentage of it, it can make a, a big difference in somebody's life or death, you know? Well, Chief, do you have, is there someone in the police department or, or who has the authority to call them back and say, look, you, you got the Chattahoochee Ambulance going midway, wouldn't Havana or Quincy be a more appropriate well, well, the problem with it is that we don't know until after, because we don't know we don't know the schedule of we don't know where the where the ambulance are at at any given time. So, you know, they could be right, and but we're finding out after the fact, because you know, with me being in, in law enforcement in this area for a long time, you know, people are like, hey, man, why y'all same one we had one right here? Or I even heard a firefighter. I live in Midway. It was a fire. Uh, my next door neighbor's house was on fire. Um, they called Quincy. And Midway has two fire stations right there. And the fire chief, uh, I called him. I was like, "Hey, why, why aren't you coming?" He said, "Nobody did. Nobody told me out." I said, "They got Quincy coming." I said, "Man, you need to get over here." So they got there and put the fire out before Quincy even showed up. Oh yeah, they're next to the But it's a dispatch situation, you know. So. Uh, I I think it's a training as far as the dispatchers. I think they need to be more aware and more focused of. Um, when and where to send somebody at any given time. I mean, maybe the program needs to be revamped or needs to be extended so they can have a full, and I know there's a shortage of personnel all through the county. And all that's a huge turnover. Region. Yes, yes. So, I, turnover, so right. going to this but that's, but, but people, and, yeah. and, and, and the problem with the ambulance, the ambulance is always going to be rolling because every emergency is emergency. You can't, they, you don't have a nurse sitting up there saying that this is a real emergency. When they get there, they'll they'll question them. Do you still want to go to the hospital? You know what I'm saying? You know, so we we had a couple of incidents at the point. Nobody left. You know what I'm saying? But the family gets excited, so they want them there. You see what I'm saying? So if, if you, we can't determine what's an emergency because you don't have a nurse right there. So that ambulance is required to go to keep the child in an emergency. But I so you're saying if 911, if I'm here and I call 911, it's going straight to Quincy, what I need to say. Mm -hmm. All consequences. Dispatch at the sheriff's office. Oh, it's kind of like I used to say, we talked to the 911. And you get somebody that knew where the streets were, where everybody was, what was going on. Well, actually, you do get here. Because we have to, no, no, no they, they have to call us. Yeah, see, the best thing to do is to call up. directly to the sheriff's department. And then you can call us after. They're going to call us anyway for the first response. But they have to call on the landline. But if you call us first, we're going to have to call them anyway. So it's going to take more time for the ambulance to get dispatched. So, Chief, if the ambulance is getting called over there, are they automatically trying to contact us? The, the they'll, they'll let, um, they'll let the, the dispatch here know that there's an ambulance headed, depending on the, the nature of the call. Like if this is something serious and they need maybe an officer to do CPR or they think it's something, you know, um, uh, life threatening, they'll have us to come out. But if it's something that they, by their training, deemed as minor, then they won't let us know. We'll just happen to see an ambulance drive by. Like, and I'll call this guy. I say, hey, did they, you know, did they send an ambulance to Chattahoochee? I just seen one go by. And they're like, well, they didn't call us. So sometimes they do and sometimes they don't. It just depends. And if maybe if that's something we can fix, because I will say, even when I got it, so I, I thought it was stupid. I thought it was. But that police being there was a common affair. You yeah. know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. You know, that, you know, and if you got a bad heart, that police being there telling, hey, it's okay, they're on the way. It's different from me telling you, uh, somebody else in the hospital. Every now, officer that makes a big difference. And that's why I was wondering about right. that. You know, are they calling y'all to come on out? You know? Well, they don't call us every time, but like I said, I try to tell the officers, hey, if you see an ambulance going through Chattahoochee, uh, call dispatch and figure out, you know, what's going on with it. If not, just follow the ambulance, you know, because you never know with our presence. Sometimes it may be a situation where the crowd is 
is causing more damage to the person than anybody. So if an officer is there to keep the crowd down, it's always good to have an officer present. Now, now I suggest that we want to get some uh, information from the manager who's trying to get into a discussion about it, because all that makes a difference. Okay. You know, so we need to get into a discussion and have this as a I, I would say. And I know, and people need to be trained properly. That is a lie. I mean, five minutes can be life or death. Amen. And I don't. I mean, I don't want anybody that I know or love here to because of negligence is what it is. If you don't know your job, it's negligence. And if you don't feel comfortable enough to know your job to call the right people, then somebody needs to be held accountable for that above them. Public hearing tonight, Madam Mayor. Ms. Rhonda, the city clerk, will handle our first item tonight. This is something you have to do each year. Um, set the tentative millage rate. Again, you, it will come back to you for formal adoption at a later date. You, you can lower it, you cannot raise it later. Um, you can lower it later if you chose to, but what we have before you tonight is the exact same millage rate that you had this current year. Although it would be considered uh, tax if you said to generate more money because of the increased value in taxes, but the millage rate is exactly the same as you have. Yes, ma'am. Um, we received from the property appraiser the certified um, adjusted value, taxable value for the city county which was 30,815,163. And based on the current military that we have, our proceeds um, for this coming fiscal year, um, as opposed to the rollback rate, it, it's within, I think, $250, $952 of difference. We won't roll back to the old rate. If, if you take the current year assessed value, tax certified value, multiply times our rollback rate, which is uh, point, uh, point nine five four six, and you take the current year times what we currently have as the military rate, the difference between the two is $952. And because it's $952 more, we'll have to advertise that it's an increase, a tax increase, which is not really, but because it is additional money, we will have to, and we get you more about it. So what we would like for you to do tonight is to set, tomorrow I have to certify that we have set our millage rate to the property appraiser on um, the state board of statute. Um, tonight I would like to ask that we motion to set the millage rate at the current millage rate, again this year, at 0.9855. And I also would like for you to include in that motion that we set the two, we're required to have two budget hearings, a tentative budget hearing, which will be um, proposed September 14th. And the notice for that will be in the trim notice that the property appraiser sends out when he sends out the trim notices. And we will need a second and final budget hearing on September 28th. And that one will be a public hearing and that will be uh, advertised in the paper. And majority of what we will be meeting on the 14th and 25th uh, budget is basically what we discussed on June 16th at the budget workshop. And it's not very many changes at all, except that we have some final figures from the state of Florida and your projected revenue. And we made some adjustments to what we anticipated to be grant and So if we could get a motion to set the mail train at nine point. Five, five. And then the two budget hearing passes. Yes, ma'am. I'll make a motion to approve the pro proposed millage rate at the current millage rate of 0.9855 and have two budget hearings on September 14th and September 28th. Second. There's been a motion on the property second. Given the fact that just with two 
all your members' lives would have been requested money. Yes. As if for the next six weeks. If we uh, pass this bill is great, we can't do anything about it until next year as far as raising money. Correct. That is correct. What is, what is our procedure if we want to? Are we still within our time frame if we want to adjust our lose rate up and then come back down? You then we can reduce it, but we can't increase it. Yes, sir. You could set it at the maximum of what, 10? Uh, no, maximum is 10. 10. Um, at one, at 10 percent. You can always come down. We can increase it by 10%. Or up you two. can up to 10. Or you're that's that's 10 mils, not 10%. 10%. Yeah. But I don't, I don't think the city could go all the way to 10. Well, it depends on where we're going with that. So if you go at 10, you say we're setting it, that would be a 0. 0.1000. You set it at that rate, then at your 10 period, you can always come down, but you can't go back up. But with all of the uh, mail out that goes to all the citizens would show that Proposed. what you put on tonight was going to be on all those green cars to go to everybody. And you know, say five mils would generate one hundred fifty thousand dollars versus the thirty thousand dollars. That's what. That's why I was going. I looked at the tax collector website the other day, and the millage rate for Chattahoochee is on ninety nine. Okay. The next closest one is Havana, and they're on one point eight five. Greensboro, Midway, Gretna. I think all theirs are very close to five percent. Now, given the fact that we are not producing uh, any revenue as it was from this thirty thousand dollars, it's, it's a lot of money. I hate to have to pull it out of any pocket, but it was to uh, from the general scheme of things for our budget, for our budget that we've got, or what we've got packed back. That's not very much. I want us to consider very strongly that if we set our rate at a higher rate, more in line with what the rest of the town is, we can reduce it. But we're, and, and I don't, I'm not advocating increased tax on because the people that are paying the taxes now are going to be the ones that are paying the increase. Because if, if, if I understand it right, Mr. Miller, you correct me if I'm wrong. If you if you if you're qualified for homestead exemption, it just does not affect you as long as the value of your home is not above the homestead exemption rate. If you're not paying taxes now, then it's irrelevant what you set you what you set you have more rate at, because that is based upon that valuation. If your valuation is totally exempt on a homestead, increasing the millage will not impose new tax on a property that's not that. Correct. So what I'm saying is the people that are that are qualified for homestead exemption, they do the people that are elderly or the people that are not able to pay financially wise that are not on the higher scale are still not gonna have to pay. But the ones that are paying now Let's say, let's say my homestead for the county, my, my taxes for the county is $20. And if we raise it to five, it would be a hundred dollars. But if my next door neighbor's house, if they're not paying anything, they still wouldn't pay. We just have to decide if we're going to continue to be the lowest in the county. And I understand what, I understand what you're saying. And, and, and if, what you're saying of um, trying to make sure that you're doing what you need to do to make sure that the city is fine. And especially like that. And if I'm wrong, now you tell me. We're trying to be doing this so we got to have fun. Well, if, you know, if, um, if, if, if every year when, when the budget comes out, we all, everybody on the council, struggle with employee raises, insurance, co pays. Money extra that we have to pay for the fireman's fund, 
Well, I think that um, the do is kind of it, it, it needs to be a small increase in that size. But you know. if, if they're going to fuss, Chris, they're going to fuss. It don't matter if it's one, one meal or if it's five meals. They're still going to fuss. If we're going to do it, then stop the bullet and do it and be done with it. Thank you for Anybody on this side have anything that they would like to add to this discussion? Well, on, on your military, I think all municipalities and government agencies have the maximum amount of military that they can set. And as she said, you can raise it. But once you raise it, you know, I mean, you, can, you know, you can't come back and raise it again. But the key to it is that when you, when you if you set it at whatever you make them ten meals or whatever, then that's going to change tax value of the people that actually paying. So the ones that are paying are not going to say anything. It's, it's people like me that don't probably say something or whatever that, that's paying. People always said that you would, would be, you'd be up for it. I agree. <laughs> I said I'm willing to say. But the key to it is this. I I question the strategy of raising your military to put a little bit more money in your general revenue to pay for say, some donations that people are asking for. You know, I would rather look at doing a budget budget uh transfer uh take it out of out of out of this and put it over there rather than come back and ask the people to pay more money. I mean you're sitting here with a big coffee or fund that you got right here. And then now you want to come over here and tax people for a few more dollars when you got when you already got the money there. Just just transfer the money from here. You put it right there where you need it. What are we going to do when we need it from here? Right. You, you, you're only talking about peanuts, Mr. Kimmery. You're only talking about peanuts. But, 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 it, but, it, but you know, millions money is kind of like money that you got, that you could get if you need it. It's always there. You know, I wrestled with this when I was going to school for. You know, do we increase the millions to get more money? And, 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 you know, at that time, we just made a decision not to do that, even though we need it. But, yeah, but you, I mean, it's an option. You know, I would just rather go and put it out of the reserve and put it in there than to basically uh, increase the taxes. That's just my sample. And, and I think a lot of uh, companies, you know, there's a lot of people who are uh, raising, they don't have the utility. Right? You know, I know plenty of people, but a lot of them, like me, they, they, they've got to find so much and so much. You know what I'm saying? They got the like Yeah, but they ain't they, a lot of the stuff out there be away. Uh Line J and all those places out there, they not getting back in the time, the front period of time. So they're not they're not really getting much as you would think that they they, they should have. They ain't got they, they don't have water. They they, they don't have water. Right? They don't have they don't have lift. So they got to try to hunt it down somewhere compared to, you know, us. You know, uh, I'm I'm Willing to listen because I'm always going to listen to my colleagues. But my, my thing is, if this council decides to do something, not, not up no fire, you know what I'm saying? That's too big of a deal. That's just my opinion. Yeah, I appreciate that. And Mr. Simmons, I want to apologize. I may not have used the best examples with the, the money coming forward for the tax preservation. That was your, that was your fault. That, I did, I, I, I asked with. You saying that, so I put you on the spot. That was your fault. You know what I'm saying? I understand, sir. I understand. Madam Mayor, we have a motion and a second. We either need to vote or we need to um, get the motion to move forward. Yeah, I'm just saying. 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 Yeah
flexibility to a minimum motion that we set the millage rate at a tentative millage rate. Temporary millage rate. Temporary millage rate. Mary should ask if there's a second to the motion to amend. Can I get a motion for a Thank you. 
find the release and wonder. It is in proper motion and second. Anybody on this side have any comments? Anybody on this side? Mr. Mulching? Yes. Ms. Williams? Yes. Mayor Richardson? Yes. Mr. Kimberly? Yes, ma'am. Bannon? Yes. Thank you. Item 10C, uh, there's two items related to this specific project tonight. Both of them are related to the Southside School Project. Uh, this first one, 10C, is a CDBG Professional Services. Uh, these are required as part of that process for grant administration and project delivery for the Southside School Project. The city put out bid advertisements, um, RFPs are technically called, and uh, we only received one proposal on each one of these, there's two different ones. And, um, this one, and this will be a small part of this particular project. Most of this is going to be the architecture type of services with your next item. But this one is for the grant administration, project delivery, verifying the work, you know, and, and, and reporting to CDBG. Dewberry Engineers was the sole bidder. We did ask the, the state CDBG people if that was going to be a problem or what we need to do. And, um, they were okay with it. So tonight we're just asking the, uh, the uh, staff be allowed to negotiate a contract with this firm if you so choose and bring and bring it back to the council. And of course, these services will be paid out of the CDBG grant for the South Side School Project. But it would be the selection, you'd be going to make the selection of Dewberry Engineer. Uh, for the administration and also for staff to negotiate the details of the contract. To, you know, for we will be there. Be there. You're, yes, so it's current contract. Wait a minute. You say that again, I missed the last question. Well, the motion that the approval we're seeking mm -hmm. is to uh, approve the selection of Dewberry Engineers for the administration and project delivery services of the grant mm -hmm. and approve staff to negotiate a contract for the Southside School Project. And actually, I think they included a price in their submittal, so there's not going to be a lot of negotiating to do in, the, in that. But we just always like to make sure that but we bring it down. Doing the same, it, it, that, that's what I'm trying. Dewberry is doing both. No, no, no that's what I, I thought I heard. Okay. Dewberry will have a minor role in this because okay. it's the contract administration. I just, I just want to make sure. Okay. Yeah. yeah. The other one is we dealing more with the professional services, and most of it's architectural services. Okay. This was just for um, grant administration, basically, project delivery. So we've got the grant. So for this. If, well, we don't have any any of this as part of that process. But if if we come to using these services, yes, ma'am, they will be paid for out of the CDBG grant, not city money. Can I get a motion in a second? I make the I just had a quick question about the um, bid advertisement for professional services. Does the um, city use what what um, avenue does the? Um, we actually were required because it's a CDBG, the Tallahassee Democrat, and but and my rule is you always put it in the three you know, the local papers. I'm not sure about the website, but I know we did put this in the Tallahassee Democrat. And there was only one bidder. One bidder. And y'all verified that the CDBG is okay with one bidder. Before I brought it to the council. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, because I was concerned about that. Yeah. Anybody on this side? Yes, sir. Mr. I'm just glad that we're moving forward on that. That's something that, you know, uh, been talked about since I've been here. So I uh, think the council and the community, got the community play a great part in but most definitely thank this council for uh, giving us the opportunity to manage it. But all the things that we're doing. So, and the citizens really, really have stepped up. I know a lot of the citizens have tried to push that. Mr. 
Lisa Malte? Yes. Ms. Williams? Yes. Mayor Richardson? Yes. Mr. Kenley? Yes, ma'am. And Ms. Glass? Yes. Thank you very much. I'll take the second item, T and D. Uh, same project link to the same project. This one is for CDBGCV Professional Services for Architecture and Engineering for the Southside School Project. Um, this is United States Council approval of selection of Barnett, Bronzac, Barlow, and Shula to provide the needed architectural engineering services which are required to complete the design and construction of the Southside School Community Center Project. Again, we advertised for the CDBG guidelines. Again, it was in kind of similar pattern, it was in the paper. And uh, this is the only bid we received. It's a Tallahassee firm, architectural firm. Uh, actually, you used them on the uh, fire department grant project a couple years ago. That same firm did that. But uh, again, staff, if you so choose, staff is uh, seeking approval to uh, the other selection of uh, Barnett Project Barlow Shooter for Architectural Services and approved staff. Now, this is important to list approved staff to negotiate a contract for the Southside School project. The reason for that, the grant allows a certain dollar amount for these professional services. So we want to bring a contract to you that we make sure that everything is covered in the grant so that the city, the uh, citizens are, you know, out. Item 10E is a grant agreement, agreement with the State Division of Emergency Management. Um, you've taken action on this one a couple of times. It's one we've been working on uh, about two years, I guess. But this is the 711000 for our generators, upgrade our generators, and to install generators at the four main lift stations. But we'll also be replacing the big generator at the sewer plant and then installing a generator at the water plant. For emergency backups, um, these will be nice caps that the energy <laughs> service is you. God forbid we ever experience another long outage, so at least the uh, water and sewer system will be functioning. This, this is a uh, grant, it was a 7525. <coughs> um, we were working on the, the 20th, when it started been approved. The governor approved us for the 25, but we do have to do a uh, application process. To receive those, so this will wind up being a 100% fully funded grant for the uh, upgrade to the generators. Um, and tonight, we are finally asking for your approval of the grant agreement and approve the mayor to sign this so we can proceed. Already, the 711 to 75%. We cut on that No, that doesn't include the, the 25%. It does not. It does not include the 25%. That's three quarters of it. Yep. Well, that's the entire amount. Yep, that will be the entire amount. Seven eleven the entire amount. We were on the hook for twenty five percent, but now we're not. They're gonna give us that. We got a motion and a second. I make a motion to approve the agreement with the state of Florida Department of Emergency Management for seven
Town in different areas. We have a number of them, but we have four that probably handle 80% of the wastewater. Okay. But they talk to the treatment plant. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> okay. Transfer to the waste treatment plant. Okay. And then we will have the big backup generator there to treat the water. So, you know, before you saw pumper trucks or saw sewage in the street during right. the storm, yeah, and right. it would alleviate all that. Okay, excellent. We might be out of power for a while, but we have water, gas, and sewage. I can say that. Right. All right, Mr. Mulkey? Yes. Ms. Williams? Yes. Mayor Richardson? Yes. Mr. Kimry? Yes. And Ms. Price? Yes. All right. Thank you very much. Next item, uh, Jeanette, is another grant. This is Grant Knight. Um, uh, we were awarded the State Division of Emergency Management. And this one is for only for 194000 but it pertains to housing here within the city. Um, so, living and housing issues that folks may have. And, um, I, you know, it won't fix every house, but it'll help some people. It's 194000 we didn't have. So, we would ask that you approve this grant agreement. Um, we set up the housing repair, there are some guidelines, but Hopefully this will be a lot easier than the other folks that came in here that we didn't control. You know, we will have some control over this program, but also approve the mayor's side of the agreement if you so choose. Can I get a motion and second? Second. Mr. Kimmery? Yes. Mr. Second. I'll second the motion. <laughs> I'm second the motion and second. And y'all make on this side. And then side on this side. Council, you have any questions before I call for the vote? Quick question for you, Mr. Chair. Yes, ma'am. Um, as far as disbursement of who can get their house fixed, there will be a criterion that um, will be sent out. This next item will deal with that. Okay. The last item that I have tonight is approval. Have you all done? No, no, no. Call for the vote. Okay. Mr. Moultrie? Yes. Ms. Williams? Yes. Mr. Kimmery? Yes. Ms. Price? Yes. Mr. Kimmery? Yes. Ms. Price? Yes. Ms. Price? Yes. My last item on the general business tonight. Um, is a task order with the management experts. That is a consulting firm that you have a contract with that has helped us with uh, some other grants. Um, Tracy, I think y'all met her here before, Tracy Busby, but uh, her company is a management expert. And this grant for the housing, it allows for someone to come in and set up the criteria and make sure it's all handled properly so there'll be no problem with the reimbursements and all that. And uh, what I'm recommending to you is, you, since you have her under contract, you just do the task order with the management experts to come in, set that up, and make sure that we do it all properly where it meets the state guidelines. And again, the grant pays for those fees, no city money will be involved. Can I get a motion? I'll second. 
you know, we tried FEMA, we tried a number of different ways, just hated to put city taxpayers' money with that kind of thing. It, it, I, I always try to find other funding sources, and it took a while. But that that's one of the big things, those two long walkways, they will be grant funding now. So that'll be coming oh, to you. Second harvest, what's the date? 12. 12. 12. Uh, again, at Oak Street. And that's all I have for you. Tell everybody coming out helping with that. That answering questions you have. Mm -hmm. uh, I have one item. Uh, at our last meeting, you wanted to get out of the business of regulating time uh, of operation for package liquor. And uh, I prepared for you ordinance number 564, which, if you're ready for that, we can consider on first reading tonight. I'll read that by title. Ordinance number 564 by title is an ordinance of the city of Chattahoochee, Florida, repealing the time restriction for the sale of alcoholic beverages for consumption on premises, or excuse me, off premises, providing for authority, providing for the repeal of city code section 6 4, subsection B, providing for conflicts and severability, and providing for an effective date. It is before you for consideration on first reading tonight. You will conduct a public hearing on this item if you approve it tonight, uh, and uh, and the, the staff then will publish the notice for that hearing at the next meeting. So uh, it'd be appropriate if you want to move this forward to have a motion to approve the ordinance on first reading and set it for public hearing. And I get a motion to approve the ordinance of first reading. But this is saying he can sell the. This limitates your time. Okay. I can make a motion to accept the ordinance number 564. Approve it on first reading and set it for public hearing. Approve it on first reading and what else? And set it for public hearing. And set it for public hearing. Well, I, mean, I, I need a little I card. Miss Whitney second what you couldn't do. Just thank you. Miss Whitney second. Right on his side. Can we make sure we got a, a, a good understanding about it? Because I don't know if we know. Anybody on this side? Okay, now I go for the time. Can we make sure we got a good understanding that the public know exactly what we are, I know some might have been either, what we are voting on. That happens, that happens yeah. before the ordinance that you're stuck in here. Okay. You will have an advertised public hearing that will advertise the title to this ordinance. So roughly, it, it, you know, we, we uh, kind of recruited a business here. And um, so we, we want to support our business people and the request was made and I mentioned it to y'all and I didn't, didn't hear a lot of um, negative from the audience or from the council. So I thought we would go ahead and proceed with it, but it uh, really helps one business, current business that uh, has come to town and it will just about one day of the week for package. It's not like a bar or restaurant increasing it. It's just resisting package sales. Uh, expanding their available hours. And it's to help a business that we recruited to Chattahoochee, and that's all it is. And that basically be on Sunday, right? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Just allow people to go in there on Sunday and take it home. You know, and um, it makes good points when you bet on it because he owns another store in Sweeney, Florida, that does it. And then, so it's, it's not like we're increasing availability because he has another school across the river. Uh, obviously, like I tell everybody, I don't want anybody shopping across the river and shopping in Chattahoochee. Yeah. You know, it's open in Quincy as well. So there's a number of places, and uh, so I thought uh, I did mention it, and like I said, I didn't hear a lot of blowback. So I think it's a, um, it's my recommendation we do, and that's why I proceeded with it. It's your, you know, it's totally up to the council. So this is to help uh, the business. And this wouldn't be the final. This just kind of getting it out to the public. Before we get to a yes, we'll advertise it as the city attorney said it will be properly advertised and come back for a public hearing at the next meeting. Anything else? 
person that's talking to most of the victims. Yes, yeah, Chris Moultrie. Yes. Chris Williams. Yes. Mayor Richardson. Yes. Mr. Kenway. No, ma'am. Well, Miss Glass is here. That being all, Mr. Miller? That's all you got, Mr. Miller? Oh, I'm sorry. Yes, ma'am, that's all I have. <laughs> Ms. Kent? Oh, I'm, I'm sorry. I did have one other item. Last year, we had a meeting, uh, and, and uh, um, as a result of, of that meeting, a speaker uh, felt that he'd been improperly treated and filed an ethics complaint against me. And that went to the Ethics Commission. Uh, Friday before last, uh, I have final disposition of that uh, complaint. Uh, the allegation was that I had acted corruptly and improperly uh, in that meeting. The uh, Ethics Commission found that, that the complaint was not supported either by fact or law, and that I effectively and uh, represent my client in the city council in particular. I have asked the city clerk to uh, attach to the record tonight so it's a permanent uh, record available and accessible to the public uh, of, of both the uh, public report, which is the final action of the ethics commission, uh, and the, uh, the uh, uh, advocates recommendation to the commission which was a recommendation that the uh, complaint was not valid and should be dismissed and it was in fact dismissed um, uh, thank you very much thank you Mr. find someone to help with the sign that we go to the nature park. They're supposed to have a new hoopla down here to get the nature park in the next month or so. I'm offered to replace that sign. I'm waiting on them to bring me, which I'm running out of time now, but she agreed to bring me a design that is nature and not nature conservation. The wildflower associate had looked at several years back. I told her to bring me that, and I would have uh, the sign place over Midway and make one. I have not heard from her since. Well, and I may be wrong. I, I think that the, the ACI painted the original sign and had been touched up by the decorator artist at Chattahoochee in times past. So that might be another option, if, if, unless they have to agree on how it would. You mean that little hand gun? The, 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 Four by four or four by eight sign that says goats in nature park and trail. Yeah, the one that hits his hand down. Yeah, yeah, it'll be out of wood, yeah. Yeah, no wood. yeah well, technically, we're supposed to have, uh, there's a requirements of a sign that's supposed to be there. Mm -hmm. We have records of that, and they had a design for one, and she, maybe she couldn't find it or something, but I told her that the city would be responsible for paying and installing that sign. But I had not heard the hand who it was. Damn. Um, but yeah, we we'll, we can try to touch up that old wood with them. I really wanted something better for the event, but whatever we need to do. But I did agree with them that we would take care of it if they bring me what they wanted, what was required. Because there was supposed to be certain names on there, the grant funding names, there was some requirements. I didn't, I didn't realize all the requirements. The Native Plant Society wanted to be on there and different things. But whatever we got to do, because yeah, it's August now.
Yeah, it was nice. But it's convenient. Yes, it's a convenience and cost. Well, I don't like it. Mr. Mike? Yes, I can say, um, I'm glad that we were moving forward. Um, thank you. Well, I think it's going to be a Hopefully, we can continue to do what we're doing with that. That's going to be a big thing for the community. Something that we've been talking about for years. Um, and I got a real clear in terms of getting my first job talking about something. Um, I also like to thank the principal for what she's doing. And if we can, I know that we've been talking about that time way before she got it. That we give her a chance, even you know, to speak with the superintendent to try to figure out, you know, kind of rather than putting her on the spot. You know what I'm saying? That we can, we, she won't mind. You know, and, but we've been talking about it for a while. Um, thank the council uh, for everything that she did in local politics or uh, anything that she is always hard to make decisions sometimes. And, I'm glad to see that this council, whether it's popular, put their ideas out at all times. And if you know, we continue to do that, we'll, we'll help in the community. And in also in politics, we'll do the right thing. Sometimes it may cost you this year. And, and that's something that's more important than being here sometimes. So I, I like to thank y'all for the growth that I have seen on this board. That you know, we're willing to talk about things regardless of whether it's like or dislike. And the community is doing great. I think there's nothing going to be perfect, but for us as a community, we are doing great. And we are very thankful for that. Uh, we're blessed to have police department, I can't say that enough, continue, you know. Uh, doing what we're doing with good financial shape. Uh, a lot of students don't have what we have. And I pray that we continue to make the decisions that we're making. And I'd like to thank the board for doing Thank you. I wanted to see about, um, Mr. President, are we all up to date with what the city needs to do for that light up Christmas, like November, Right, Caroline, is everything on the go still today? Oh, uh, well, we need to have another community meeting because I don't think they finalized the assignment of the buildings and all, but as far as what the city's uh, responsible for, we're going to be ready. Our decorations will be uh, up in the banners, and uh, like I said, we need to have another yeah, community meeting so that everybody knows what they're decorating. Um, and of course, we want to move on with the plans. Okay, um, is that still going to be on the floor? Yeah, you approved it tonight. It was on your consent yeah. agenda. The yeah, fifth. 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 The fifth on Sunday. Uh, last time I checked, I think it was a Saturday. Oh, my phone was looking because my birthday was before. On the consent agenda, Sunday. there was the reroute of the DOT permit for the parade was approved tonight. Okay, well, that's the Sunday. On Sunday? It's going to be on. Four. That calendar right there says Sunday. The fifth. Okay, so it is the fourth. Mm hmm. Because I told you it's my birthday we have it for me. We have a you know you want a present. A birthday for I know we have my I'm gonna be just waving at everybody. It's my birthday. I get I'll go I change it. I'm working on I ain't finalized the permit. Next year's calendar. Yeah. Or it's on the fourth. That's why yeah. I want to ask. Yeah, whatever the Saturday is, okay. it is. Right? Okay. The fourth. Okay. Yeah, I'll change it. I'm I am i have not completed the permit process yet anyway, so I just want to make sure that because I've seen that. Do we need to create that on the Do we need to create that on minute? Yeah, because I got to submit it. I got to upload it to the website uh, in order to approve the permit. So, well, yeah, these credit cards. I wasn't on the website. They approved it as a fifth. Can we just request the scrutiny clerk in the minutes before? Uh, just real quickly, make a motion. I'll make a motion to move the trade to the December of the fourth for the permit from DOT for the closing the traffic. Okay. Yes. Ms. Richardson? Yes. Mr. Kimley? Yes, for the birthday girl. 
Okay, the next thing, um, I just have to say, I can't say enough about our chief. Like, it was hot as Hades Friday, but he was out there meeting and greeting and giving kids little badges. And one night I had a problem in my backyard, and he was the one that answered the phone at 3 o'clock in the morning. And, I mean, that's above and beyond what his call of duty is. And I appreciate it, and I appreciate you doing how you're doing for this city because it seems to be doing a lot better as far as safer I feel and if I have a problem I call and there's somebody that comes and I appreciate that it takes leadership to make people do their job and I appreciate that yes, um, oh, I want to thank all the businesses old and new for coming and staying in Chattahoochee I have um, so excited. I know I don't like to do Facebook Live, but I went Facebook Live Friday three times. <laughs> I went three times Facebook Live and because people, we've got to get it out there. We don't have a newspaper like we used to have where it was only focused on Chattahoochee and Sneed. And people don't know what's all going on and the old people don't have everything we need. So we need to keep circulating the business out there. And Miss Betty, I got on the same color shoes tonight. And that's all. <laughs> I'd like to thank everybody for coming out. Thank the citizens for all they do. I recently attended the um, elected conference, and it's the first time we had already discussed the smart leaders. And the big focus this year was on electric cars and mm -hmm. adding adding at least one electric car to your fleet. That's and moving forward to getting electric cars to help lower your cost. That was a big takeaway from this um, meeting this year. Um, and putting a charging station in your town because people have electric cars and, and the city can benefit from that if you have a charging station. So that was a big takeaway is the charging station and electric cars because we have to be considerate as moving forward of people who have electric cars in their town that they don't have to go far away to charge your cars. So that was the big takeaway under um, electric conference. Um, I had a call about the rec center. Um, someone called and they were having an event and it was, kid, it was for kids. First of all, anybody know me, they know I love the kids when it comes to the kids. It started a little late, so there was some calls about them being there late. I think personally think six o'clock is early to somebody to be out. I know it's a residential area, but eight o'clock to me would be a better time for somebody to have something and get out versus be out at six o'clock. When you are paying to run a building, but we have the visitation set at six o'clock. Amen. That time frame just does not no. work. And for someone to be called and there were kids, I have a problem with that. When it comes to my kids, I got a problem with that. So I'm asking the council to think about it, look on it. I talked to the city manager about about it, getting on the agenda because six o'clock is just early when people have an event there. People, only people not parking in people's yard. They don't have a lot of loud music. I am against six o'clock. That's my position on that. And I have talked to the city manager about bringing that to the council. Thank you, Main Street. Thank you, guys. I enjoyed the city, so it was a blast. <laughs> it was hot, <laughs> but, but I enjoyed being out there. I enjoyed seeing people come to Chattahoochee that does not live in Chattahoochee. I see my fifth grade teacher, <laughs> so I hadn't seen her in forever. But it's just nice to draw people into the city to see what we have to offer. Keep doing what you're doing, Miss Bailey. Make sure you get with the city manager because. Budget time, so we can work on being a benefit to you guys all as you benefit better. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you Mr. Thank Miller, you. for all you do. I missed your call today, but I got the boys to bed. <laughs> I thank for our city manager who works diligently, takes our calls, and never, I don't care what time we call him, he responds. Ms. Rhonda, thank you for all you do because we know we keep you busy. <coughs> Mr. 
the council for all they do. They do the chief, all the city staff. Thank you guys for working hard and making that Chattanooga move forward because that is what we're here for, to keep our city growing and moving. If nothing else, you need to do that. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.